Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 12th of March. Indian Prime Minister Modi, French President Macron inaugurate a solar plant in northern India. Security forces gun down three militants in India's Jammu and Kashmir province. And at least 50 killed as Bangladeshi plane crashes in Nepal airport. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and French President Emmanuel Macron on Monday inaugurated a solar power plant in Mirzapur city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. During Macron's four-day visit, India and France signed 14 packs in various fields including solar energy, climate change and defence. <laughs> French President Emmanuel Macron and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated a solar power plant on Monday in Mirzapur city of India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. The 100 megawatt solar plant is the biggest in the province and has been built at a cost of nearly $76.9 million by French firm Engie. Reportedly over 100,000 solar panels have been installed in over 380 acres of land which will generate 156 million units of electricity every year. On a four-day visit to India, Macron on Sunday co-chaired the founding conference of the International Solar Alliance with Modi, an intergovernmental organization that aims to promote solar energy in 121 countries. Later in the day, Macron and Modi arrived at the banks of River Ganges in Prime Minister Modi's political constituency of Varanasi. Both the leaders took a boat ride in River Ganges in the holy city. In the earlier part of Macron's visit, India and France signed 14 pacts in various fields including solar energy, climate change and defence. Security forces gunned down three militants in an encounter on Monday morning in Anantanag district of India's northern German Kashmir province. The identity and group affiliation of the slain terrorist was not immediately known. Three terrorists were killed on Monday in an encounter with security forces in Anantnag district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. An anti-militancy operation was launched in Hakura area of Anantnag district late on Sunday night following information about the presence of militants in the area. The three terrorists were killed in the pre-dawn encounter with security forces, senior officials said. The identity and group affiliation of the slain terrorists was not immediately known. India blames Pakistan of regularly training and assisting armed militants to infiltrate the Indian borders and spread unrest in the Kashmir Valley. Pakistan denies the charters. A prominent Pakistani human rights activist, Hina Jilani, on Sunday blamed Islamabad's foreign and security policies are intended to frighten people. She accused Pakistan's security establishment was involved in cross human rights violations across the country. Pakistan's prominent human rights activist Hina Jilani on Sunday said that Islamabad's foreign and security policies are intended to frighten people. While addressing an event in Canada's Ontario province on Sunday, Jilani blamed Pakistani security establishment is involved in gross human rights violation in parts of the country. The fact remains that Pakistan's foreign policy and Pakistan's security policy is based on mischief and really intended to frighten people, not because of our power, but because of the menace we can be in that region. This is not a healthy situation. Activists have long blamed Pakistani army and intelligence agencies for enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings of innocent people in Sindh and Balochistan. Human rights defenders say Pakistani forces operate with impunity in these regions and any attempts to highlight the situation is muzzled. 
Moving on, silent anti-Pakistan protests were held by Baloch activists outside various offices of the United Nations in Geneva on Sunday. The protesters aimed to highlight gross human rights violations inflicted upon innocent Baloch people by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. Silent protests were organized at various offices of the United Nations in Geneva to raise the issue of human rights violations by Pakistani forces in Balochistan. The protesters were seen carrying umbrellas and wearing shirts of Free Balochistan to demand a sovereign Baloch state and make the UN aware of atrocities being committed against the Baloch people by the Pakistani army and spy agencies. Baloch activists have long accused Pakistani security forces of ethnic persecution and gross human rights violations in Balochistan. They blame the Pakistani establishment of forcibly taking control of the land and resources of the ethnic Baloch people and committing extrajudicial killings. In an estimate, over 45,000 Baloch people are missing from Balochistan. Activists claim attempts to highlight the situation in Balochistan have long been repressed and such campaigns can be very effective in spreading awareness. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's Ministry of Public Health has said 1 million women and nearly 100,000 children in the country are addicted to drugs. An event was held by the ministry on Sunday to raise concern over the alarmingly high rate of addicts. Public Health Ministry officials have raised concern about the alarmingly high number of female drug addicts in the country. According to them, at least 1 million women and 100,000 children are drug addicts. Last year, the officials had stated that 3 million people were addicts, but the new figure of 1 million female addicts could mean the total number is much higher than the initial one. Officials said a number of women in the country have turned to drugs as their husbands were addicts. Currently, there are at least 20 drug rehabilitation centers across the country that treat women and children. Officials have, however, raised concern that these are not enough to treat the rising numbers of addicts. In news from Nepal, a Bangladeshi airliner with 71 people on board crashed on Monday while coming into land at the airport in Nepali capital Kathmandu, killing at least 50 people. The plane, operated by US Bangla Airlines, was on a flight from Dhaka when it hit an airport fence and burst into flames of the Hill Ringed Airport, which is prone to bird strikes and other hazards. The Bombardier 6400 series aircraft burst into flames and came to rest in a field near the tarmac of Tribhuvan International Airport. Injured passengers were immediately moved to the hospital and are undergoing treatment. More on news from Nepal. Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has secured the majority of the vote of confidence in the lower house of Nepal's federal parliament. The voting, which concluded late on Sunday evening, witnessed 208 votes in favour of Oli and 60 votes against him. Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has garnered a majority of two-thirds votes in confidence vote motion in the country's parliament. The voting, which concluded late on Sunday evening, witnessed 208 votes in favour of Oli, with 60 votes against him out of 200. Lawmakers from the CPN-UML, CPN Maoist Centre, RJPN, Federal Socialist Forum, Rashtriya Prajatantra Party, Jana Morcha and independent lawmaker Chakka Bahadur Lama voted in favor of the Prime Minister. Out of the 63 lawmakers from Nepali Congress Party, only 60 turned to vote against Oli in the election held in House of Representatives. Other two smaller parties remain absent from the voting process. The newly promulgated constitution of Nepal has a mandatory provision of taking vote of confidence within 30 days of the commencement of the parliament. The first meeting of newly elected House of Representative members took place on March 5. 
Farmers in India's northern Punjab province are switching to strawberry cultivation over conventional crops like wheat and rice to reap rich dividends. Farmers claim profits from strawberry cultivation are almost double compared to those in cultivation of the food grains. Farmers in India's northern Punjab province are switching to strawberry cultivation over conventional crops like wheat and rice to reap rich dividends. Farmers claim profits from strawberry cultivation are almost double compared to those in cultivation of food grains. The South Asian nation is carrying a huge inventory of food grains from 2016's record harvest while exports have been hit by an appreciating rupee, falling global prices and restriction on overseas shipments. वैसे कणक कणक चावल की खेती से तो स्ट्रॉबेरी की खेती डबल मुनाफा दे जाती है तकरीबन इसका तीन लाख प्रति एकड़ खर्चा है तो खर्चा सब सारा निकाल के तकरीबन साढ़े चार लाख की हो जाती है सवा लाख डेढ़ लाख प्रॉफिट हो जाता है पर एकड़ प्रॉफिट हो जाता है Farmers in northern India are reaping huge profits with strawberry farming. वो अभी पंजाब में अगर देखें तो 100 एकड़ के आसपास इसकी खेती इस साल हुई है। तो जिसमें अमरसर जिला है, गुरदासपुर है, पटियाला है, रूपड है, और लुधियाना, मुक्सर और और भी कई जिलों में थोड़ा-थोड़ा किसानों ने स्ट्रॉबेरी की फसल इस बार लगाई है। Strawberry cultivation is being done on 100 acres of land of India's northern Ludhiana city. Strawberry cultivation was first introduced in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir in the late 1990s. It later spread to rest of the country. In a simple yet unique wedding, more than 20 couples tied the nuptial knot at a mass marriage ceremony in India's western Gujarat province on Sunday. The gesture aimed at reducing financial burden on the families of the brides. Around 25 tribal couples tied the nuptial knot in a mass marriage ceremony organized by a local charity organization in India's western Surat city on Sunday. The special ceremony witnessed young underprivileged men and women from different families getting married as per traditional rituals. The organizers were over the moon and promised to organize such mass weddings in future as well. शादी का सामूहिक कार्यक्रम यहाँ रखा है और यहाँ सूरत के हमारे हमने 21 जजमान तैयार किए हैं जो इनका खर्चा और सब बहन कर रहे हैं और ये कार्यक्रम हम लोग आगे भी करने का प्रोग्राम रख रहे हैं अगले साल हम इक्यावन जोड़े की शादी का प्रोग्राम रख रहे हैं ब्यूटिफुली ड्रेस्ड यंग मैन एंड वुमेन फ्रॉम ट्राइबल फैमिलीज गॉट मैरिड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ देर फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली यहाँ पे अच्छा है सब हमको तैयार होने के लिए मेकअप का सामान पहनने के लिए चोली सब दिया है। Mass marriages are becoming popular, especially among the financially disadvantaged sections of the Indian society, as they reduce worries of financial implications among the parents or guardians of the brides. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Indian Prime Minister Modi, French President Macron inaugurates solar plant in northern India. Security forces gun down three militants in India's Jammu and Kashmir province. And at least 50 killed as a Bangladeshi plane crashes near Nepal airport. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.